Hello everybody. I'm going to attempt to dismantle a gearbox today. The reason being, I believe it is absolutely knackered and I want to see the damage. But anyway, I'll give you what I know of the backstory as to how I've come across this gearbox and what it's out. So basically, there's a car got transported here on the well, back of a trailer because it wouldn't drive. It was stuck in gear. It's a 2012 Mark III Ford Focus 1.6 five-speed manual gearbox. Now when the car came off the trailer, we had, to, we had to put our foot on the clutch to push the car forward because it was jammed in gear. It would not, it would not come out of gear. After a bit of jiggery-pokery with a gear lever, it eventually freed off and we were able to start the engine up and drive it in first gear. But as we drove it forward, I'm sorry I can't show you this because the job's already done. But as we drove the car forward onto the ramp, the gearbox was making one horrendous bloody noise. And I was actually able to select most of the gears, apart from I could not get reverse gear, it would not go in. So I believe that reverse gear is, is completely melted. And what, when we got the car on the ramp, I looked underneath and there was a lot of gearbox oil underneath. So I'm thinking, ah, it's low on gearbox oil. Then I noticed the reverse light switch, which I'll show you in a minute. The electrical part of the elect reverse light switch was just hanging there on its wires, just dangling. And all the oil out of the gearbox over obviously a period of time has come out of the reverse light. I don't understand what's happened there and how the reverse light switch has separated into two pieces. I just don't know. I never got to speak to the owner of the car. But we removed the gearbox, we got a second hand gearbox off eBay and fitted it to the car to get the job done quickly. The owner didn't want the car anymore, so this company here has bought the car. So we got the car cheap. So now it will be a sales car. But the reason the owner got rid of the car was because of the expense of actually getting a gearbox. <coughs> and the gearbox we got off eBay was not exactly cheap. It was something like £700. But <laughs> on, on the same token, to actually take this gearbox apart and try and do it up, which I don't think is going to be possible, I think there's too much damage done in it, it would have cost probably more than that. So anyway, what I was going to do, before I put this in the scrap metal pile, I'm just going to have an attempt to take it apart and see what damage we can see. Because I believe it's run low on oil, it's probably melted some bearings or something, can cause a lot of damage inside the gearbox. So I want to have a look. Let's go. Here is our reverse light switch. The electrical piece that should be here got flung in the bin, so I'm sorry I can't show you that. But look at my screwdriver. It goes straight inside the gearbox, <laughs> all the way. So uh, that's where all the gearbox oil has come out of this hole here. I, obviously, I don't know why the end piece, the electrical piece, has actually broke off here. I have no idea as to why that's happened. Anyway, let's tip this up. Now I've never taken one of these boxes apart before, but I'm going to have <laughs> I'm going to have a damn good try. I think I'll whip this select mechanism off first, but this circlip has to be removed. And there's a little Torx 40 headed bolt here. Okay, there we go. Whoop. Oh yeah, this piece, this boot comes off and this piece slides out and off and that bit just comes off. That's it. I don't know whether this stud has got to come off. I don't think it has, but I'm going to take it off anyway, just in case. You never know. Come on. That's it. I weren't actually too tight. There we go. Nah, I think that was just a stud to actually hold the selector on. Now this is going to be the trickiest part of the lot I reckon. Fifth gear would be in this end casing. So, start off with, let's get the casing off. There's, there shan't be no finesse taking this gearbox apart because it's scrap anyway. Or at least I think it's scrap, so I'm just going to... If I have to rip it apart and do a lot of damage in the process, I don't care. It's a little bit stuck on there. Bloody hell. Let's get a bigger screwdriver. 
There we go. There she goes. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that was tight. <laughs> oh my God. Are you seeing this? There's a, there's a bolt here. <laughs> it's just, just a random bolt. Hang on. There's a whole load of gunge as well. Yeah, I think this is a, uh, you could call it metal paste. But what's, what I'm interested in is where's this bloody bolt come from? Yeah, that shouldn't have been floating around in there. But I can see where it's come from. Just a little observation here. The fifth gear in this box is in a separate little casing all by itself. And as in my experience over the years, where you have this particular type of setup, if a gearbox runs low on oil, it's the fifth gear that gets the brunt of it first. And looking at this particular gear, it's dry. It's dry as a flipping bone. <laughs> it's like there's been no oil in here for a little while. So this is, I bet this has got rather hot. Anyway, I guess what I'm going to have to do now is remove these circlips and get these gears off. Having the correct circlip pliers would help, but I don't actually have the right pliers with me today. If I can get my screwdriver hooked underneath that. Yeah, yeah I've bent it, so uh, <laughs> it, it's coming off one way or another. Yes, it'll be off in a minute, trust me. Actually, I can hook it now with the screwdriver. Yep, it's gone. Right, I'm going to have to lift the gearbox back up on its face again. There's a tiny little roll pin going through this selector fork onto the selector shaft. So, I'm going to try... Is it coming out? Yes, it is. Got it. I guess the burning question now is, can I remove, oh, oh my God. I do believe it's coming off. <laughs> right. There she goes. Oh, <laughs> we're off, we're off. <laughs> and it's come off in one piece, but look how dry that is. It's like flipping bone dry. Mmm. I bet that's absolutely knackered. That little gold piece there, I believe is what's called a bolt ring. That should just be free spinning on that gear, but it's not. <laughs> it's flipping, it's jammed on. It's, oh no, it's not. Tell a lie. It's just come off. No, that's, but I'll tell you something. That should spin, that should spin on that, but it's not, it's kind of, once it goes on, it gets stuck. So uh, that shouldn't be like that, that should spin. It's just like a taper, taper fit. So, yeah, it's a bit tight now. That's what it should be like, Ugh, it's stuck again. But anyway, let's get on. Before I started taking this apart, I had visions of this fifth gear actually being seized on solid and I'm going to have a lot of trouble getting it off but that's actually <laughs> that's actually coming off straight away it's not even tight on the shaft so happy days is all I can say there's no oh yes there is <laughs> I'll show you this bit in a minute Okay, things are getting desperate. I've tried heating this up. I've tried my lever bars and heat, hitting it and banging it and God knows what. It won't come off. I've even tried pouring cold water over the hot gear. That still hasn't worked. So normally at this point, I would take this to a gearbox place and have them remove it. I do have a puller. Unfortunately, it's, it's too wide. So, Although it actually fits in the slot there, I, I, if it was narrow enough, I could fit that on there and pull this off, but it's too wide so it won't fit, so it's no good. So 
my last resort today to get this gear off is to cut it off. I ain't give it up. I haven't quite cut all the way through it on the ends of this gear, <coughs> but this bit's just gave way. So, <laughs> oh God almighty. Yep, there we go, it's off. Now that should have uh, freed it off a little bit, I hope. It still don't want to move. So I think I'm gonna cut another piece of it off now. Do you know what? I'm getting rather warm. <laughs> it's like, for the love of God, surely it's got to come off now. So, holy crap, that is tight. But it's moving. <laughs> it's coming a little bit. That's got it. Oh! Flipping neck. Do you know what? And it's still on pretty damn tight. I'm going to try and give it another tap. I'm trying two lever bars now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that literally just jumped off. Oh my flipping heck, that was on super bloody tight. So, if you ever have to do one of these gearboxes, you really do need the correct puller to get that gear off. When we first took this end casing off, there was a little bolt just laying there. That's obviously come from that hole there. So there's another two, three, four, five, six, about another seven of these little bolts, Torx headed bolts, I'm going to remove now. Last one. Now, oh, it's actually loose. I expected this to be a little bit tight, like the rest of this gearbox. So that plate can come straight off. Right, okay. It looks like we've got a pair of Bloody great big circlips to remove now. It's a coming. There's one. Little tip here, if you hit the circlip until that piece touches on that bearing there, it can't go any further. Then rather than it just spinning, you can knock it off. I'll move around the other side. There we go, almost. Well, we're getting there. All we have now, as far as I can see, is a whole row of 13 mil bolts and there's two 15 mil bolts either side of the level one. So, if you were taking this apart to put it back together, note what position the bolts go in. So, I shall just run around and whip all these bolts out. Righty ho, there's a nice little place to put a lever bar. Oh, it's coming apart! I will position another lever bar in the other side of the casing. Let's see. Oh, something gave. You can do it. It looks like the gears might be coming off with the actual casing. 
because I'm sure these bearings are supposed to go through the middle. Oh, they are. They've just dropped. Yeah, the actual gears were coming up, lifting up with the casing, then all of a sudden they just dropped, which I think they're supposed to do. So now the gears will stay on the bell housing side of things. But it's still a little bit tight. Give it a bit of a jiggle. I think it's coming. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> We're off! Da -da -da. Oh dear, this don't look good. Look at all that metal swarf. Mmm. <laughs> if I can, uh, there's loads of it. Actually, be careful with this because this stuff can be pretty damn sharp. But look at that. Nice. Oh, yes, indeed. Loads of metal swarf and bits of plastic. There's a, what the, <laughs> what the hell that is, I don't know. It looks like a piece of plastic tube. But yeah, a whole load of metal swarf and obviously bits of plastic off the bearings. I think what I'll do, first of all, I'll unbolt this selector mechanism, which is only two 13 mil bolts. So, let's remove them. I'm thinking maybe this gear selector, it doesn't seem to want to come out, but here, there's a 22 mil bolt. This, I believe, let's get it out. That is what's called like a, a detent plunger, I think. I think I'm right. This, uh, it's basically, when, when the gears are selected, it's the donk, donk, as it holds it into gear, because it's like a ball bearing, and that slots into the selector mechanism. So like when you put it into a site, first or second gear, it'll go clonk and that will hold it in place. Now with any luck, hopefully this selector will come out. It twists. Oh, it's lifting up. Woo! <laughs> That's that one out. Before I actually remove these shafts from the casing, I just want to point something out. These two bearings, we know this one, there's some ball bearings missing out of it. And for the life of me, I haven't even found them yet, but I can't even turn that bearing. It, it just moves a tiny bit, because it's, it's actually melted. This bearing next to it, that I could see that like the plastic part in here is actually melted as well. And that these bearings are like lubricated for the gear, from the gearbox oil. And this one here, it's like, <laughs> it won't move. It's just like wriggling a little bit. So both of these bearings are completely melted and seized up. I'm just going to tip this gearbox up a minute because I'm going to show you something. I just wanted to say this, but when the gearbox casing is on here and this gearbox is filled with oil, there's a certain level the oil is supposed to sit at. So that when these gears are turning, they, they, they sit in the oil a little bit and they splash the oil around the gearbox and that's how all the gears and the bearings in this box get lubricated. They get lubricated by the oil being splashed all around them, okay? But if the oil gets too low, so the gears can't splash the oil around, obviously things start getting hot, as in the case of these two bearings and fifth gear, which has caught the brunt of it. You saw fifth gear was like completely bone dry and it black, like it's been really hot. And these bearings, to get like this, I mean, that has certainly got bloody hot to do that to the point where you can't even turn the bearings anymore. Even this taper roller bearing on this differential, it's kind of like, it feels okay. It turns and it feels smooth enough, but it looks a bit black. It looks like it's got a bit hot and I'm sure it has. So that would definitely need replacing if we were to rebuild this box, but obviously we're not gonna, we're gonna just trash it because it's just like not worth it. I'll just take this clutch release bearing out anyway, just so we can say we've dismantled most of it. And the last one, that should just slide off now. Just out of interest. <laughs> yeah, that's knackered anyway. You can hear that bearing's as noisy as hell. The car that had the new gearbox, the, the Mark III Focus, it, it did 
it did gain itself a new clutch and release bearing anyway, so we, wouldn't, we definitely weren't going to use the old parts. Not like that. Okay. I wanted to take this reverse gear off. Unfortunately, this shaft that the reverse gear is sitting on, it seems rather tight in there and does not seem to want to move. So we'll leave that alone for the minute. But as I say, I've, I've never had one of these particular gearboxes apart before. So, it oh. <laughs> there's our, oh, this, oh sorry, this is the input shaft. Which this is what I'd, I'd call a lay shaft. <laughs> but anyway, that's one shaft out. This is the end of the input shaft I had all the trouble with. I had to cut the gear off. Funnily enough, looking at this shaft now, you could probably press a new gear on that and you'd never know any of the difference. You have to change that bearing though, which obviously seized up solid. I, <laughs> I can't, it only moves a tiny bit. It's just seized solid. The actual gears look okay. This bearing here, which is like nearest the bell housing, where most of the oil would have been, is, feels fine. Obviously you would change this anyway, but I mean, <laughs> but this one is okay. But it's like I say, the, the bearings that are furthest away from when they get splash fed through the oil are the ones that are going to cop it the most. Right, will the reverse gear come off now? <laughs> yes, it, yes it will. Hello. Now for our main shaft. Oh yeah, this selector, it actually slides off the shaft itself by looks of it. There, and that's it. One complete main shaft with the selector intact. I'll just remove these selector forks. It's a bit of plastic there. I just want to see whether these all select gears properly. So this will be third gear, that goes in. Fourth gear, yep, everything seems pretty much okay there. We'll go for first gear. Oh, second, yes, oh, it doesn't want to stay in. Yeah. I would say that's supposed to stay up there, but <laughs> it's, it's the springs are rather weak, it just drops out. So yeah, that, that, would, that whole hub would need replacing and the gear. And you can see where it's gone onto reverse gear. You can see all the teeth here where reverse gear would slot onto it like that. <laughs> They're all pretty well chewed up. That's what happens when you don't re select reverse cleanly. They kind of crunch a bit and they don't get any better over time. The cog don't look too bad, the actual reverse gear cog. But obviously it hasn't done this one any good. Anyhow, I shan't bother taking this shaft apart, but Everything would appear to be reasonably okay until you get to like fourth gear and then it feels a little bit mm, <laughs> not great. So I, I presume there's another bearing underneath this gear which has probably melted as well. But I mean to, to take this shaft apart I'd have to take this bearing off, I'd have to cut this bearing off and then start taking it apart bit by bit. But I don't think we're going to see a great deal anyway. I can already say that most of the bearings in here are probably okay. They didn't get that hot. Obviously the, the bearing that did get the, the most heat into it where it's lost the oil is this end bearing. And obviously where fourth gear is, it's definitely not feeling very well. And I can hear it, it doesn't sound great. That doesn't leave us with a whole lot. The differential, that lift out. That bearing's okay. Mm. <laughs> yep, the, the diff actually looks okay. But, yeah. But there again, the diff is like, sits the lowest in the gearbox. So most of the oil would still, it would have still been on the diff. So that's probably okay. The bearing at the main shaft sits in. That looks fine, that hasn't overheated. Yeah, all we've really got is a whole load of bits of swarf and melted plastic inside this box. So that's it, and also the magnet. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a... 
That's got a fair old bit of a metal paste on it, I'd say. Yeah. Yep. I guess that's it. Nice. Oh my god. I guess the, the moral to this story is don't let your gearbox run out of oil. You know, from time to time, it'd probably pay just to check underneath your car where it's parked to make sure there's nothing dripping. Because you never know, a few spots of oil on the ground could be the start of something much more serious. However, I do believe that in this particular case, when you're driving, if the gearbox was to lose all its oil, it's gonna to be too late before you even notice anything anyway. That's generally the case. So anyway, I just wanted to take this gearbox apart just for my own personal humour. <laughs> I just wanted to see what the damage was. It wasn't as much damage as I thought it was going to be. By the set, the, the noise that box was making when I drove it forward, I just wish I'd recorded it. Yeah, I would have thought it would have done a heck of a lot more damage. But it just seems to be a bit of bearing damage at the end of it. So, uh, well, it was worth it anyway, just for the hell of it. So anyway, I'm going to put this in the scrap metal pole for the scrap man. Bingo. Well, I'm done. I guess I'll see you all in the next video. See ya. Have you got anything to do? Nope. I'm just copying it sweet. Well, guess what? You've just been promoted. You're now in charge of rubbish. Now you have something to do, haven't you? See ya.